All right, we're going to do a study this week on uh, the subject of are there different levels of hell? I heard a sermon on this by James Melton years ago, and it was kind of like, you know, he kind of ended it by saying, I don't know. And, uh, you know, I'm going to end this study by saying, I don't know. <laughs> uh, does it look like there are? Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you the scriptures today. It's an interesting study. What is the first reference to the word hell in your King James Bible? Well, let's look at it. The law of first mention. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, what I mean by the law of first mention, if you're new here, is that oftentimes a word in your King James Bible, if you do a word study, it will oftentimes be defined the first time it appears in your King James Bible. Uh, I mean, this book is such an amazing book. There's no way that this thing was just completely written by men and God had no part in it. Um, this, this book is God's book. There's no question about that. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, by the way, is an incredible chapter. A very, very, very relevant to today, all that's going on and things. Uh, just absolutely amazing. I mean, it just, it kicks Catholicism. It kicks, it kicks the integration movement. Um, you know, all this different stuff. But we're going to start here in uh, Deuteronomy 32 verse 15 is where you read the first time about hell. Okay, it says... But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Interesting, because the Catholics try to say that Peter is the rock upon which Jesus built the church. <laughs> Peter's not the rock, okay? Jesus is the rock. Verse 19, And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward Generation, children in whom is no faith. Interesting. They have moved me to jealousy, jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Can God bring other nations in to, to punish a nation that once was godly? Oh yes, God will do that. Verse 22, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. Hmm, we'll get back to that. And shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within. Gotta love that one. Shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. The sword without and terror within? Kind of like a country that's at war and yet has terrorism problems within their borders. Boy, the Bible's so archaic, isn't it? I mean, it's just so hard to understand. I mean, look at that. The sword without and terror within. Boy, this 16th, you know, well... 17th century Elizabethan English. Oh, it's so difficult. You just can't even understand it. <laughs> sure, right. Just had to put that little part in there. But notice there in verse 22, it says, shall burn unto the lowest hell. And, you know, people get all Hebrew. They get into the Hebrew and the Greek and all this other stuff. Hebrew, it's Sheol and, and Greek, it's Hades or Hades or however you want to say it. Um, you know, in the King James Bible uses the word hell. It's somewhat misleading, and you get into all this stuff. Um, no, I believe it's not misleading. I believe it's supposed to be written this way. And uh, But what about this thing of the lowest hell? Are there different levels of hell? In other words, uh, if you get some guy that dies, say uh, some guy that's just a drunken bum, he dies, and then you get some wicked like the Black Pope or something like that, he dies. Do they both get tortured the same amount down in hell? We're going to look about that today. 
Go next to Psalm 86. Psalm 86, verse 11 through 13. It says here, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, for thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Huh, wait a second here. Um, back there in Deuteronomy, it's talking about the lowest hell is for the wicked people, but here it's, he's saying you've delivered me from the lowest hell. Well, now there are two ways to look at that, okay? Um, number one would be in the Old Testament, the saints that died went down into this area there under the earth. We're going to read about that here in a little bit. I think we're going to cover that. Yeah, we're going to be covering that um, as we continue. Luke chapter 16, they went down because there was no perfect blood shed to pay for their sins, so they couldn't go up to be with the Lord in heaven. They had to go down there waiting for the Messiah to come and shed his perfect blood to pay for their sins. Uh, so you could say, well, David is, is prophesying that he's in the lowest hell. And, um, and then he's, you know, it says there, uh, thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. So you're delivered, his soul's delivered when Jesus comes down and sets the captives free. Um, that's one way to look at it. But there's another way to look at it, and that is that David knew he was a wicked sinner and that the salvation that the Lord provided for him is going to deliver him from that lowest hell. Interesting. Let's go to the next one. Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13. Through 18. It says here, A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Uh, but he knoweth not that the dead are there. And that her guests are in the depths of hell. Is that more than one level? The lowest hell? There are different levels there? The depths of hell? Or is it that they're it's just saying that hell is in the depths of the earth and that's where everybody's at? You know, her guests there. And it's kind of funny too because of the picture of a wicked woman there uh, really ties into Revelation chapter 17 with Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth, abominations of the earth who we understand to be the Roman Catholic system, uh, the Mother Church. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. But very interesting there again. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah 5, verse 13 through 16. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth, rejoiceth, rejoiceth can get it out yet, shall descend into it. Let's see, where am I going to read to? Verse 16. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. That's interesting too. God is actually uh, going to be magnified by sending people to hell. Because it will be in judgment. I mean, you know, you look at, look at how wicked some of these people are out there, and you think to yourself, you know, these people need to be judged. I mean, something needs to be done. We need to see justice done on these people. It's coming. It's coming. The Lord has everything planned out. Don't ever forget that. But you see there that hell actually has enlarged herself. Again, is it just growing this way or is it going like this? Down. Are there different levels? Next, we're going to go to 
Luke chapter 16. It's what we talked about earlier, the rich man and Lazarus. What happened to the Old Testament saints when they died? Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. We're going to read all these verses here. It says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The only time this term appears in your entire Bible. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he left up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So we see where these two men went. Lazarus goes down to this place called Abraham's bosom, and the rich man goes to hell. But notice he sees Lazarus over there in Abraham's bosom. Hmm. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He's not burning up. He's being tormented there. Verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Hmm. So you have a chamber there where the saved from the Old Testament are there waiting for Jesus Christ to come down and set them free. That's why after Jesus you know, died on the cross that there were many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. Interesting. But they're over there, and the rich man's over here in hell, and he looks over there and he sees them. And Abraham says, hey, we can't come across to you because there's a great gulf fix between us. A great kind of a big chasm, like a canyon almost. If you can imagine that. Verse 27, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren. Uh, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Not just believe. <laughs> and he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose, them, rose, rose from the dead. So again, we see that there are Two distinct chambers down there. Two distinct places. Now, I believe that that Abraham's bosom is no more. You know, the, Paul talked about being absent from the body, being present with the Lord. Uh, we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now, if you're saved. Um, but, you know, we do see that there are different chambers down there in hell. But we'll keep going here. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Back towards the Old Testament. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4 says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. There are angels that have sinned, and they've been sent down there. And I, we're not even going to get into you know Greek words or whatever. Well, this is Tartarus or something like this. Whatever. We stick with the King James Bible. That's all you really need. Um, but they're delivered into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Hmm. Interesting. They're cast down to hell. But they're chained. Rather interesting. Uh, not like other people. In other words, these angels have a special punishment. What about somebody else being chained? Well, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20, verse 1. 
and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Hmm. Interesting. So not only are the angels that sinned cast down there into the bottomless pit, um, or excuse, I shouldn't, shouldn't say the bottomless pit, they're cast into hell in chains. Satan has the same treatment. But it's not called hell in this passage. It's called the bottomless pit. Could that be where it comes in with the lowest hell? Could it be that, you know, the worse you get, the farther down you go, you sink down? I mean, if somebody tied, took you out to a lake and threw you in, and then they took a friend of yours and they tied chains around them and threw them in, who's going to go deeper into the uh, lake? Interesting. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false, false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. If you've seen the other studies on hell, you understand that hell is definitely eternal torment. Uh, the beast and the false prophet have been in there, at verse 10 there, 20, chapter 20, verse 10, they've been in there over a thousand years. So don't tell me it's annihilation, you burn up quick and then you're gone or something not true. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. Now, what was the first mention of the word, the words lake of fire? Well, chapter 19, verse 20. We didn't go over there to that verse, but that's the first time it's mentioned. The lake of fire there. Kind of interesting. And this is just a theory. But could it be that right now there are different, different layers of hell? You know, the depths of hell. Could it be that there are different degrees there? But in the end, at the great white throne judgment, all the lost dead, you see them coming up out of hell there, they're cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. So could it be that they start out at different levels, but then in eternity, the lake of fire, they're all unified. <laughs> you know, they're all one, so to speak. All together, one big unhappy family. Very interesting. But let's look at another interesting phrase here in the King James Bible. The term greater damnation. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Verse 14 and 15 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Hmm. Two things we need to look at there. Ye shall receive the greater damnation. And twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. You see, well, Jesus was just speaking in a way that just kind of say, you know, well, you're you're receiving, you know, greater damnation in the sense of, you know, uh, I mean, I would look at it and I would say simply, there's really only only two ways to look at this thing, and that is, number one, the greater damnation is God can make your life a living hell on earth here while you're alive. Um, you're just not going to have any chance to really get saved after you've done these types of wicked things as a, you know, 
the Pharisees there, the scribes and Pharisees, as hypocrites. Um, the Lord's just going to mess your life up really bad. So the greater damnation is your life gets really bad. It's like living a living hell, and then you end up in hell for eternity. Much more than somebody that actually gets to kind of enjoy their life here on this earth. And I understand lost people, you know, there's no peace to the wicked, saith my God. I understand. But you, you see what I'm saying. There are some lost people that die a more of a peaceful death than others. All right. You could say that. Or you could say that they're going to receive a level of greater damnation in hell until they hit the lake of fire when they become like everybody else. I don't know. And twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Again, it doesn't say twofold more the child, child of the lake of fire or something. It could be that the, their damnation in hell is, is twice as bad. You know, their, their convert, I should say. Their damnation is twice as bad as the false prophets led them that way. Very interesting. Mark chapter 12. Go to the next one. Mark chapter 12, verse 38 and through 40. A similar thing here. It says, And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, these shall receive greater damnation. Um, and you look at the, the groups of people that the Lord attacked when He was down here. Uh, he took it really easy with sinners, people that knew that they were sinners. But the self-righteous uh, people from organized religion, the Lord was rough on them, very, very rough on them. And uh, I think that, you know, it is definitely a possibility that they're going to be receiving... Um, a greater level of punishment, of damnation, if you will, in hell, than just the average lost person that died. I mean, I, I don't want you to, I don't want anybody out there to, to misunderstand what I'm trying to say with this study. I'm not trying to say that there's going to be people that get down to hell and it's just going to be like a little bit of a, a tiny little fire underneath them, and they're like, ah, that's actually not that bad, you know. I, I mean, it's bad, but it's not too bad, you know. Anybody that goes to hell is going to have it rough. Okay, anybody that's in hell burning is going to regret being there. But are there greater, greater degrees of punishment? No, the Bible does seem to indicate that. Next, let's go to Luke chapter 20. Luke 20, verse 45. We'll start there, verse Luke chapter 20, verse 45 says, Then in the audience of all the, the people he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes which, which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a show make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation. Very similar to what we just read there in uh, Mark chapter 12. Okay, again, greater damnation. Hmm. You say, well, that's in the Gospels. You know, we've been looking at the Old Testament, the Gospels, and things. What about for a Christian, for the church age, if you will? 2 Corinthians, a very pa famous passage. I go to this one a lot because it's so important for people to get. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, about the ministers of Satan. It says here, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Now look at this. Whose end shall be according to their works. Why not just say, whose end will be in hell? Why is it that their end will be according to their works? Maybe because uh, it's the same group of uh, organized religious hypocrites that Jesus Christ condemned. Those ministers of Satan, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Hmm. Their end is according to their works. How about that? You say, well, uh, you know, okay, but I, I don't know about any of this stuff. Well, the real purpose of this message, 
uh, is not to theologically convince somebody who's lost that uh, the existence of hell and whatever else, uh, you got to come to the Lord by faith. All right. Um, and if you say, well, I need to see hell, I need to see physical proof of hell in order for me to believe in it so then I can believe in Jesus Christ. And, you know, well, you got a problem. Because even if you would see physical proof of hell, you still need to believe in, believe in Jesus Christ by faith. So you say, well, faith is not the place of science. Okay, then, you know, take your chances. It's a rather stupid, you know, chance to take. But I want to just end with a little short salvation message here. 1 John chapter 5. If you don't understand what biblical salvation is all about, I just want to say this. I'm not trying to scare you with the illusion of hell or something like people say. Scare you so that you can come to my church and finance my mortgage and whatever else. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. Um, I'm warning you because I believe what this book says. This book has way too much truth in it for me to deny it. Right, First John chapter 5, verse 9. And I know you're intelligent and everything else, the atheists out there. You're so smart and you have things so figured out that you can... You can show me places where this book contradicts because you would certainly understand a spiritual book being a lost person. And I know, you know, I've tried religion, I've tried all this stuff, yeah, intellectually. But God's not going to show anything to somebody who's filled with pride and self righteousness. First John chapter five, verse nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Do you believe this record that God gave of his Son? A book written down for you? Verse 11, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that you have eternal life? You say, well, no, nobody can know. It says you can know. If you believe the record that God gave of His Son, you can know where you're going to go when you die. So why don't you know? Well, you see, I was raised in church. It doesn't say that. It says, believe the record that God gave of His Son. Yeah, but you see, I was baptized as an infant. It doesn't say that. It says, do you believe the record? Do you believe the book? Do you put your faith in what's written in this book? The God of the Bible. And I don't mean the Bible is God. I mean, the Bible writes about a being named God. Do you believe this record? You say, no, I reject that. Okay, then you're going to go to hell. And, you know, if you're incredibly wicked, you might get to see if there are different levels of hell. I believe the Bible points that direction. Definitely. I believe that there are different degrees of punishment. Obviously, something's going on. You have lost people that go to hell. They're not being chained. And yet, Satan and the angels that fell are chained when they're put down in there. Now, you'll all be one and the same when you go to the lake of fire for all of eternity, but uh, why on earth would you want to go to a place like that anyhow? It's kind of weird. First Peter chapter 3. That's where we're going to end. People say, well, I'm, I'm, I believe in science. I want to see things before I believe it. Well, what if you go to a place where you seeing it and you finally believing it you believe in hell you because you've seen it, but you can't get out. Oh, I'm willing to take my chances. Okay. First Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. You want to understand what salvation is? You believe the record, and this is what it is. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Salvation is once and done. It's not a continuing process. The just him for the unjust, sinners, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit.
If you want to get saved, you're going to have to drop your intellectual pride, your self-righteousness, not saying, I reject the, the notion of sin and whatever else. You're going to need to reject that stuff. Okay? You're going to have to need to, need to drop your pride a bit. All right? You can watch our salvation message. I'll take you through all the scriptures so you can see the record that God gave of His Son tell you how to be saved. Or, you know, the fact of the matter is it's just you come to God as a sinner and you say, I understand I'm a sinner. I understand that these things have separated me and you. Uh, I need to be saved and then I want help having a changed life after that. I don't want to continue to live in this stuff. You see, having an understanding of, of just not that my sins have, have you know, put me in a bad spot with the Lord, but also that's good that you need to have that, but you also need to understand these sins are hurting me and I need help getting out of this stuff. I can't do it on my own. That's why I'm coming to God for salvation. I can't save myself. I need His help. Very, very important. So, that is going to be it for this week. I um, have another video to do yet, so I'm going to be ending this one. But uh, I'm going to be doing some more studies on the truth of hell. Uh, Jesus talked about hell more than anybody else in the entire Bible. So, um, you know, Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Now, if he talked a lot about hell, I think that we should as well. It's an important subject. Very important subject. So, uh, that is going to be it for now. And I thank you very much for watching.